This year's Six Nations had some truly magical moments. In this video, I'm going to take you through my top 10. Some of them are heartwarming, some of them are heartbreaking, but they're all incredibly memorable. Right, let's get started. And these are in no particular order, although I did save my absolute favourite for last. So, started with number 10, in 10. Week two, Ireland versus Italy, and young Stevie Mulrooney broke everyone's hearts as he belted out Ireland's call. <laughs> What a voice on the kid, and as it rose to a crescendo, I couldn't help but scream, Come on, Ireland, myself. And Big Faz loved it too. And the feel-goods continued as Stevie got to visit the Ireland camp, meet his heroes, and have this incredibly wholesome interaction with Big Faz himself. Hello? When are you going to play Hello, for Andy. us? I know. Hey? You I know. You could play for us at the weekend with the confidence that you had. It's all yeah, I'm never nervous when I sing. But I was a bit nervous of the crowd, but when I got in song, yeah, it was just a yeah, breeze to go through it. it. Here we are for you being so brave and nailing, nailing your words. This is for you, a signed... Oh. Thank you. A signed top from all the boys. And talking of interactions with Big Faz, in nine. Week four and England play Ireland. It's been an absolutely wild first half and Andy Farrell and Steve Borthwick share heated opinions as they disappear down the tunnel at half time. Neither is known for this kind of thing so people were fascinated to know what it was all about. But with complete class, they both batted questions away in their own style. You and Steve were exchanging a few words at half time down the tunnel. What was that? Oh, just, how are you doing Steve? Nice to see you again, not spoke to you for a long time. Are you able to share what it was about? I know people want to read into things like that. I have incredible respect for him and what he has done with, with that team. In eight. Opening night, the biggest game of the tournament, France versus Ireland. Paul Villemse back into the side following an injury to Mia Fu and he celebrates by taking Andrew Porter's head off during a ruck clean-out. This was deemed to only warrant a yellow, but after his 10-minute rest, he came back on and completed his self-destruction by smashing Caelan Doris in the dome as well. France went on to get obliterated, and I doubt we'll see Valencia in a France shirt ever again. In seven. Week two, and Scotland had dominated France for most of the game, but somehow were losing by four points coming into the final moments. Scotland knocked on. France somehow didn't get a clean exit, allowing Finn to force a turnover and it was suddenly game on. Ignoring a huge overlap, Scotland drove over the line to score what they believed was the winning try. The ref thought it was held up though, and after four minutes of rock and rolling, the TMO couldn't find sufficient evidence to overturn the decision despite most people agreeing a try was almost certainly scored. Another what if to talk about forever. However, Scotland didn't stay miserable long as in six. Having scored two tries in the victory at Twickers the previous year, Big Doohan was a cock -a hoop to do one better this time around. The first, a simple finish after a magical break and offload from Hugh Jones. The second, a spectacular solo effort after England handed over cheap possession. And the last, from an England line-out, a charge down kick, a scramble, break and huge gain in ground leaving the ice cool fin to put it on a plate for delighted Doohan. A first Scottish hat-trick versus England in history. In five. Week three and Italy had battled to a grand finale in France. Tied 13 all and the crazy French down to 14 men after a Dante red card are trying to win the game from within their own half. Zuliani wins the turnover. Italy just need to knock the penalty over to win the game, but in a stadium with a closed roof and the shot clock ticking down, incredibly, the ball falls off the tee. France charge, Garbisi kicks his focus but slams the ball against the post as time goes red. Social media goes wild as Italy miss out on a first Six Nations win in France. This next one makes me chuckle. In four. When an opponent's boot comes off, it's almost impossible for someone like Andrew Porter not to take advantage. 
I can only imagine his joy when he realised it belonged to his opposite number and then the coup de gras, the cherry on top of this already oversweet cake, is that play continued for well over five minutes before Gareth Thomas could regain his footwear. Absolutely magical. In three, discipline is a mindset, a team mindset. And this is perfectly shown here as Tommaso Manoncello drags his centre partner, Nacho Brex, out of this ruck to attempt to avoid a penalty. What teamwork. And if that was the dirty work, then the next one is pure glitz. In two, this pass from Nolan LeGarrick needs only one word. Wang! This ridiculous cross-field, out-the-back pass from the young French scrum half deserved to be intercepted at least three times, but in the most French of all French things, it almost led to a ridiculous try. God damn you, Sam Costello, for tackling the BB gun. And I've saved my favourite for last. In one! As Wales geared up for the wild game against France, Uncle Max Boyce sang hymns and arias to his delighted congregation. I've loved this song for a long, long time. He's a good friend of mine and former teammate sings it regularly. I wonder if he'll bring out the new verses that Max wrote for this special performance. And there you have it. My magic moments from the 2024 Six Nations. Which one was your favourite? Or was there another moment you enjoyed more? Let's hear it in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. Do not forget to get out and play.